Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to The 51%. With so many of us confined to our homes, in this edition we're going to take a look at how the coronavirus is impacting women. Coming up, domestic violence rates surge across the globe as millions are living in lockdown. We report on the situation here in France and also neighbouring Spain, which is leading the way in offering help to those at risk. Also, how working from home has become the new norm. We'll be speaking to Alison Maitland, a journalist and author about how the way we work will be changed forever. But first, and with families in lockdown worldwide, the rates of domestic abuse has spiked upwards. Even the United Nations is calling for urgent action to combat the global surge. I urge all governments to make the prevention and redress of violence against women a key part of their national response plans for COVID-19. And here in France, authorities have reported a rise of more than 30% in domestic violence during the first week alone after the country went into lockdown last month. In response, the government announced several new measures to make signalling violence that much easier. But as France 24's Alison Sargent and Marie Schuster report, putting them into place is easier said than done. <laughs> For four years, this woman was emotionally and sexually abused by her partner. She left him in the weeks ahead of the lockdown. During the first week of lockdown, domestic violence cases reported to French authorities rose by over 30 percent. To make it easier to sound the alarm, the government announced that alerts can now be made in pharmacies. After a several-day lag, pharmacists have been given guidelines and information to advise women. Temporary support centers are also being set up outside of some supermarkets. But there are only eight planned nationwide, and this one has seen no visitors so far. Il faut quand même du courage à ces dames qui sont dans 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 ce centre commercial pour oser quitter la queue. C'est pour ça que notre affichage non seulement indique le point éphémère, mais aussi donne les coordonnées de notre association. During confinement, even calling can be complicated. Before the lockdown, this shelter would receive as many as 10 calls a day. Actuellement, on n'en a quasiment pas. Euh, pour vous dire, aujourd'hui, j'ai reçu aucun appel. For those who leave home, the government has agreed to pay for 20,000 overnight stays in hotels and shelters. But many more permanent solutions will have to wait. Il y a une espèce d'inertie euh, aujourd'hui dans certaines démarches. Le confinement fait qu'on ne traite que les urgences, par exemple au niveau du tribunal. Filing for divorce is one procedure that has been put on hold. Associations say they're bracing for another wave of women seeking help once the confinement period ends. And foreign women here in France suffering from domestic abuse are even at a greater disadvantage when it comes to the problem. The NGO Women for Women France aims to inform them of their legal rights. It's launched a campaign in a variety of languages, with the English version being fronted by actor and singer Jane Birkin. Ever since the beginning of the COVID-19 shutdown, there's been a terrible increase in domestic violence. If you're suffering, please dial 17 or text 0114 discreetly. There's someone who can speak your language at arretonslesviolences.gouv.fr. To Spain now, where the government has launched a campaign to tackle the issue. The Prime Minister has even said domestic abuse victims can break their confinement if necessary. Our team in Madrid takes a look at how authorities are seeking to help those at risk. At this Madrid police station, this unit specialises in cases of men abusing their partners. Since Spain's lockdown began, helpline calls have risen. Pues imaginemos una situación donde ya se está produciendo la violencia, 
aunque quizá no lo sepamos, porque todavía nadie ha dado la voz de alerta. A type of violence that Anna Beya has lived through. When she left him, her husband nearly killed her. That's why she called her international support network the survivors. Anna and 20,000 former victims like her answer their phones every day to offer support. Hay mujeres que nos dicen, me raciona la comida, me viola por las noches. Es un clima de terror y sobre todo invisible porque sucede dentro de la casa donde ellas no pueden pedir ayuda al exterior. In a country where all non-essential economic activity has ceased, pharmacists have taken on the role of raising the alarm. Vendría alguien, nos pediría una mascarilla 19 y nosotras nos encargaríamos de llamar al 016 y también preocuparnos si esa persona está bien, si necesita asistencia médica. While many risk isolation, neighbors are asked to keep an eye out, a community role that could save lives. Now, the pandemic has obviously turned the world of work upside down. Many of us are now working from home and we're doing this as we also homeschool children. And until a vaccine is available, this may become the norm for a significant number of us. Alison Maitland, a long-time writer for the Financial Times, has written several books on women in business. Her most recent book, Indivisible, co-written with Rebecca Still, is about the inclusion in the workplace. It's just been published and she joins us now from her home in the UK. Alison, thank you so much for your time. Working from home is no longer the new norm, but the new necessity. But how does this impact women, especially those with children? Trying to do this around children around your partner also trying to work at home. This is very, very difficult times for many people. But it's also an opportunity for us to really reflect and rethink and reshape the world for the better and to make work more human for everyone. So one of the things that could come out of this that would be very positive for women, uh, for men too, but I think women would particularly benefit from this, is an increase in, in agile working. I mean, this has been the biggest ever experiment in virtual working, and it's been a forced experiment. But after this, physical presence is no longer going to be the default in many jobs because virtual has become essential. So a lot of employers who you know, were already, already set up to uh, be virtual have seen much less disruption than those who've been resisting uh, flexible working and more flexible ways of working for a long time. And skeptical employers have seen that it can work, that it can be done, even in jobs that they didn't think could possibly be flexible. So it's exposed that old myth that you can't trust people if you can't actually see them working. As you say, so many companies have lagged behind on accepting working from home as a legitimate practice and so they're now playing catch up. But what do they need to do to ensure that their employees get the support required? What's really critical for managers and for leaders now is to show their human side. So these skills are going to be absolutely critical uh, for, the, for this new world of virtual work that we're in. Um, so it's about checking in with people. It's about really keeping it connected with them, asking them, treating them as individuals making sure that you understand that everybody is differently motivated, that everyone's circumstances are different. Um, so these are leadership skills that are absolutely critical. They always have been, but they're really going to come to the fore. And um, these are skills, actually, we could say, you know, inclusive skills, things like communication, empathy, uh, emotional intelligence, collaboration. These are skills that women have in abundance. Now, before this pandemic, Alison, it was already a struggle to change the mindsets of many companies as they dealt with inclusion and diversity. With so much of their workforce currently off-premises, most bosses are obviously now operating in survival mode. So what can they do to listen and support their employees, particularly their female employees? Well, the most important thing is to have a conversation with them, isn't it? Because if you, if you know what people are actually up against, then, and, and if you're doing that in a virtual scenario, 
Uh, if you're doing that in team meetings, check in with everybody right at the very beginning. How are people actually managing? How are they surviving at the moment? Because this is the thing that's occupying everybody more than anything else. Um, and, and if you have that check in, you create trust, you create uh, empathy around the workplace and uh, much more openness and vulnerability as well. So people, it's really important that, that that should be shared right at the beginning of any kind of conversation. How are you doing? What can I do to support you? How will our concept of work change as a result of this pandemic? And more importantly, how will it affect women in the workforce? I mean, it's going to actually affect uh, things like business travel uh, a lot. So uh, travel has been um, a very sort of important, business travel has been a very important part of uh, getting promotion for a, lot of, uh, for a lot of companies. And I think that's going to change and that's going to benefit women too, because um, with less, with business travel not being seen as the prerequisite for getting promotion, indeed, actually becoming perhaps politically incorrect, I'm talking about unnecessary travel here, uh, becoming politically incorrect and environmentally incorrect. Um, it means that uh, there'll be far less emphasis on that when you're actually looking at people uh, that you, you know, for promotion, for, for, for uh, career progress and so on. That's going to benefit women who've tended to be less mobile and uh, have, have tended to miss out on, on that. Um, and it'll benefit men too. But above all, it's going to, it's going to benefit all of us through um, through our, our, our struggle to, to tackle the climate crisis. Alison, finally and briefly, what would you say to women in particular who are working from home struggling to manage it all? Take a deep breath. Don't expect too much of yourself right now. Uh, be compassionate and kind to yourself above all. Um, but if you can, also use this time to reflect on what kind of world do you want to see emerging from this crisis and what can what action can you do even if you think it's a small action in your own community in your own family in your own work that will make a change to achieve the kind of world that you really want to see in the future Alison Maitland it's been great speaking to you thank you so much and that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page. That, of course, being France24.51% or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.